If you're staring down retirement with nothing saved, you're not alone. Five in 10 retirees have less than $50,000 saved and will fall into poverty during retirement. In this video, I'll reveal three retirement investing strategies to make that money last. I'll show you how to produce the cash flow you need while still protecting your money so it'll be there when you need it. We're talking investing for retirees today on Let's Talk Money. Beat day. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Hey, Bowtie Nation. Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now, Nation, we've already talked about the retirement crisis here in America, and last week I gave you a pre-retirement investing plan to grow your portfolio while still protecting the money that you've earned. But there's another piece of this retirement crisis, one even more critical than those building their portfolio. There are more than 50 million Americans aged 65 and older, and 6 in 10 of them do not have enough money to pay the bills. So here's that survey that we've been using from Go Banking Rates, and we're looking at the boomers and seniors here. Nearly 3 in 10 retirees have no savings at all, and the orange bar here, and another 17% have less than 10 grand saved. But really, we're looking at these first four bars, the 61% of retirees that have less than $100,000 saved for retirement. Fidelity estimates that a retired couple will spend over $280,000 on healthcare alone, and this chart really shows how fast your savings disappears in retirement. This shows five portfolios at 65 years old, from $50,000 saved up to $250,000. We withdraw just $10,000 a year to help pay living expenses, and look how fast you're left with nothing. That $50,000 in savings lasts less than five years. You're broke by the time you reach 70. Even that $100,000 portfolio, that doesn't last through retirement, depleting entirely before the age of 77. And that's only withdrawing $10,000 a year in addition to your Social Security. With the average Social Security benefit for a couple at $2,300 a month, this means three grand to live on in retirement or just $1,900 a month if you're a single retiree. Now those assumptions are built on returns for an extremely safe portfolio of stocks, bonds, and real estate. The problem here is that so many retirees see this and turn to those high-risk investments in a mad attempt to just to get rich or go broke trying. After all, even an $80,000 portfolio is only going to create a grand a month if you average 15% a year return, so what's the problem here? The problem, of course, is that those high-risk, high-yield investments, even some of those high-yield dividend stocks, can just destroy your portfolio as the stock price falls. Dividends get cut, and now you're scrambling to create that cash flow on half the portfolio. So instead of gambling with your portfolio, instead, I want to share three strategies for investing in retirement. These three strategies will not only produce the cash flow you need, but also the safety to make your money last. Now, I've seen a lot of people use these strategies, and I have my own opinion for which I like best, but, but I've never asked the community which you like best. So as an informal poll, let me know in the comments section below which of these three that we'll cover do you like best and why. So watch through each and let me know which one do you think is going to be working best for you. Our first retirement investing strategy is one of the most popular, though a little complicated. That's the bucket strategy. The basics here are separating your money into three accounts, each with different levels of cash flow, safety, and return. And this all starts with that first bucket or account. Here you hold enough cash and super safe money market funds and short-term bond funds to cover about 18 months up to two years of your living expenses. So let's say your living expenses are $45,000 a year, or about $17,000 after Social Security benefits. So you would put maybe $25,000 to $34,000 in this first account and invest it in those investments that you know are going to be there when you need them. So we're not talking much growth here. In fact, you'll probably be losing money to inflation if you kept this in here, but you're going to be spending this money down each month, so it's not really an issue. The point is that safety and knowing that you've got the cash to pay for your expenses set aside. Now, the second bucket or account, you want to put another three to five years worth of expenses, and I'll explain why this is next. So revisiting that example where you need 17 grand a year after, after Social Security, then you put between 50 to 80 grand in this next account, and you're going to be investing it in dividend stocks, long-term bond funds, and real estate investment trusts. So this is your cash generating bucket. These investments are riskier than we saw in that first bucket, but still fairly safe, and they produce some great cash flow. The idea here is that each year you're going to be taking however much you spent from your first bucket and refill it with money from that second bucket. So for example, say you spent $17,000 from your first bucket of investments in that first year. 
you then go into your second bucket. That second cash, that second account takes seventeen thousand dollars out, whether it's from that cash generated by the dividend stocks or just selling some of your other uh, some of your stocks there. You use that money to refill your first bucket. This means you know you'll always have the money to pay those living expenses because you're annually refilling that first bucket with the safe investments. Finally, in this third bucket, you have everything left in a more aggressive portfolio of stocks and long-term investments for growth. In the years when the market is up, you can take some money out of that aggressive bucket and refill the second one. So you see, we're always trying to keep those first two buckets filled. Now, how this helps make your money last while still protecting you and making sure you can pay the bills is pure genius. You've got upwards of five years worth of living expenses in those first two buckets. That means if the stock market were to crash and you don't want to sell some of those long-term growth investments in your third bucket, you've got five years or more to wait for prices to come back. So that's your safety net. That time that this strategy gives you to wait out any weakness in the stock market, let those investments recover so you're not selling at a loss. It also gives you the maximum in return because you're able to have those growth stocks and those long-term plays in that third bucket. The advantage of the bucket strategy is that it gives you the opportunity for that upside return, but also protects you from the market crashes. Cons are that you're always going to be tempted to invest in those riskier assets in your first bucket. I know it sucks to see 18 months worth of expenses just sitting there earning almost no interest, but you have to resist the temptation of putting that bucket at risk. Let it do its job providing safe cash and this strategy will work. Next in our retirement strategies is a little easier to set up and a whole lot less risky. This one's called the matching or ladder strategy. Now this strategy is going to be the ultimate in safety because you're exactly matching your expenses with safe bond investments. Whereas the bucket strategy only guaranteed those next two years worth of expenses and those safe investments, laddering is going to guarantee you have money every year to pay your expenses. So here's how the ladder strategy works and we'll use this graphic I found from Fidelity. Starting from today, let's say you have $20,000 in living expenses every two years. So you're going to invest those $20,000 in a two-year bond. Now the way bonds work is that they pay an interest rate twice a year and then return your money at the end of the bond's life or its maturity. Then you're going to invest another $20,000 in a bond that expires in four years. Uh, one that expires in six years and then one that expires in eight years. What happens is that in two years when that first bond expires, you get that $20,000 you can use to pay for your living expenses for the next couple of years. Now since two years have passed, that four-year bond that you bought has two years left and it's going to mature right when you need the money to pay that next two years worth of expenses. Now beyond this eight years worth of bonds that you're going to buy, you can also put any extra money in a regular stock portfolio that's going to earn a higher return. Every two years, you use that interest collected on all these bonds plus an extra that you need to buy a new eight-year bond that's going to go on the end of your ladder. So your ladder is getting shorter every year or every two years because bonds are maturing, but you're adding a new bond on the end to lengthen it out again. So pros of this laddering strategy are that it's the ultimate in safety. You've got bonds to cover your expenses in every year out to eight years. You're also able to invest in those longer term bonds for a little bit higher rates. Cons though are that this strategy is more expensive compared to that bucket strategy. You're not getting much return from the bonds right now, so that part of your portfolio, the enough to cover your living expenses as much as eight years out, isn't producing much growth. This is a great strategy for investors that maybe have a little bit more set aside or those that want less stress in their investments. Our third retirement investing strategy is going to be good old fashioned dividend investing, but don't think you can just invest in the highest yielding stocks. I've got a few rules to follow to make sure you get the cash flow that you want, but also the protection you need. First, and this is what I'm going to get a lot of pushback from, but unless you've got a huge portfolio, don't think you're going to be paying all your bills with just your dividends. A good dividend portfolio should yield between four to 6%, which means you'll need a $240,000 portfolio to collect that thousand dollars in dividends each month. Now, without that much stashed away, I don't want you chasing higher yield stocks, but, but instead thinking about taking some of your capital gains as well. So on top of that 5% yield, you can expect maybe another 5% or so in portfolio returns each year. And this is where you make up for that difference on a smaller portfolio. So if you're sitting on $100,000 saved and you earn 5% in dividends each year, so around $5,000, then maybe you sell $5,000 in stocks to make up for that difference. I know a lot of you are sitting there saying, hell no, I never want to sell my stocks. But that's what you saved this money for, to use in retirement. Now is the time to sell. Now the reason why I don't want you reaching for that higher portfolio yield than maybe 5 or 6% is because, and don't get me wrong here, it's okay to have a couple of high yield stocks that pay 8 or maybe 10% dividends. But if you're trying to get that from your entire portfolio, 
then you're going to exclusively be in these high yield investments that may not be all they seem. For example, a lot of these closed in funds pay yields of 12 and 14% and even higher, but they lose money on the fund value. Worse still is they tend to lose even more when stocks fall because the fund manager is using so much leverage to create that 15% yield. You also have those mortgage rates and the BDCs that provide really high yields but can be murder on your portfolio when interest rates rise or when the economy slips. So what you want to do instead is pick dividend stocks from different sectors, invest in a few dividend funds and, and aim for that 4-6% to annual yield that's not only going to provide you safe cash flow but also some price appreciation in return. Of course, the pros to this strategy is that you've got a chance for a much higher return than those other two strategies. Your overall return for all three buckets is going to be around 4-6% to depending on how much you're able to keep in that long-term stock bucket. Uh, the return on the matching strategy is even lower because you've got more set aside in bonds. By comparison, dividend stocks have averaged a return around 8 or 9% for decades. So not only is this a great strategy to get as much out of your investments, it's also going to make those smaller savings go further. The downside to this dividend investing strategy is that it's just not as easy to follow as the other two. You don't have those rules on how to invest. Of course, it's also much riskier as well with no money set aside to guarantee your living expenses. Now, this doesn't mean you can't combine these three strategies, putting them together for safety, but still the higher growth in dividends. For example, you could match your next four years worth of expenses and bonds, then divide the rest of your money up into two buckets focused on dividend stocks, uh, one for safer stocks and another for higher yields, but a little bit more risk. To start you on that dividend theme, click on the video to the right for seven of my favorite dividend stocks and see how to create the cash flow every single month. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.